Hello everyone, you all know that the Earth's axis of rotation is tilted. It's tilted 23.4 degrees with respect to the elliptical plane that the Earth revolves around the Sun. Astronomers use sophisticated mechanisms and techniques by looking at distant planetary objects to measure the axial tilt. But the interesting thing is, nature provides us with this sliver of opportunity where people like you and I could measure the axial tilt, perhaps in our own backyards. I find this extremely fascinating and we'll talk about how you can do this and how I attempted to do this with a couple of friends of mine. I divide this into, into two parts. One is how do, we, how do we measure the axial tilt? And the second is let's take a deeper dive at the math and the logic behind this. How do we measure, right? It just comes down to a couple of very simple techniques. The idea is essentially get a pole, stick it into the ground perpendicular to your Earth's surface, figure out your latitude, figure out your local solar known, and measure the shadow and the length of the pole. And with these little, little simple measurements, you can actually figure out the axial tilt of the earth. So the, the technique that we'll use really applies for the summer solstice. So summer solstice, also known as the longest day of the year, is on June 20th in the year 2020. And every year it varies, you know, usually it's June 20th or June 21st. And uh, I picked summer solstice to make this, uh, make this happen, to do this experiment. As I just told you, how do you measure the angle uh, or, or the axial tilt really comes down to knowing your latitude and measuring the ratio of the shadow length versus the pole length and then taking the inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of the ratios of the shadow and the pole, you get your, your angle which is measured in degrees. So if you are north of the Tropic of Cancer and you live in the Northern Hemisphere, the axial tilt is going to be given by your latitude minus the measured angle. If you are below the equator, or sorry, if you are between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer, your axial tilt is given by uh, the latitude plus the measured angle. If you are south of the equator, the axial tilt is given by the measured angle minus the latitude. If you are exactly at the equator, the measured angle would be very, very close or should be theoretically very, very close to the axial tilt, which is 23.4 degrees. As I said earlier, I have uh, two friends helping me out. Uh, one friend lives in New Jersey, United States, and the other friend, my childhood friend, who lives in Bangalore, India. And I will try and perform this experiment right here, uh, local to where I live, and we'll try and aggregate all these results and see, uh, you know, who did better. So let's go out, take some measurements, and let's come back and talk about the math. I have uh, three little poles here, each with uh, different heights. And the only reason I just went with three different poles is to see if I can get uh, better measurements of the angle that I'm trying to measure here. Unfortunately, there is uh, no sun. You know, he's hiding behind the clouds, so I'm hoping he'll come out and we'll have at least a faint shadow for me to make some measurements. So the sun came out just for a little bit and again vanished behind the clouds. And when it was out, I made some markings on the end of the shadow here. So this was the end of the shadow for the first pole. This was the end of the shadow for the second pole. And this one was the end of the shadow for the third pole. So let's take some measurements and see what the lengths of the shadows are. For, for the first pole, I think it's about 13.8 so what we essentially want to do is take the ratio between the length of the shadow and the height of the pole and that is going to give you the tangent of the angle here for this right angle triangle 
and that's what we'll try to find by taking the inverse tangent of the ratio of the length of the shadow to the length of the pole. Let's see how we did and let's go back to the drawing board and figure out how to calculate the tilt of the earth. So my outdoor experiment is done and I have um, you know some results and this is what it turns out to be. So first we'll talk about my measurements. You know I had three different uh, posts and the only reason I try to do that is to sort of get the best measurement out of it. I cheated a little but hey I think it's it's all fair in science and math. So I picked the best measurement that I had out of the three and it turns out to be the longer wooden pole that I had which gave me a shadow length of 13.8 inches and the pole length was uh, 46.25 taking the inverse tangent and subtracting that from my local latitude which is uh, 40.0252 I get the axial tilt to be 23.4112 pretty impressive uh, you know I'll take this any day and my young friend Vismai who lives in New Jersey he reported this number he had a little stick I believe and he measured the shadow length on his local noon on June 20th 2020 and it turns out to be 16 inches and his pole length was 53 taking the inverse tangent and subtracting it from his local latitude, which is 40.252, he got 23.435, still pretty good. I think uh, I, would, I would certainly take this. And the last one was my friend Arun, who lives in uh, Bangalore. I'm not sure what went wrong with his uh, calculations. There are lots of variables here. And he reported that the measured angle was 11.44 degrees and his latitude is 12.97 because he lives between the equator and the tropic of cancer we'll have to add these two measurements and it turns out that he got a value of 24.44 you know now let's look at the math behind this and try and understand why this really works so as you can see this is our earth and if the earth's axis of rotation was not tilted this would have been the axis of rotation and the earth would have rotated uh, along this axis and it would have been perpendicular to the elliptical orbit that the earth revolves around the uh, sun. So, but we know for a fact that earth is tilted and it's tilted 23.4 degrees and that's what is represented by this line here. The red represents the north pole and the blue represents the south pole and this angle here is 23.4 degrees. And our equator is a line, it's an imaginary line as you all know, drawn at right angles to this pole, pole axis, or the, or the polar axis. And we have our Tropic of Cancer, which is really at latitude 23.4 degrees. So first of all, what is a latitude? A latitude is the angle between the equator and a point on this on the sphere which is really the earth that we are talking about here so the angle between the equator and the tropic of cancer is 23.4 degrees so is the angle between the equator and the tropic of capricorn which have not represented here and my latitude is 40.0252 so what does that mean? That is really the angle between the equator and an imaginary line drawn from the center of the earth to my location on, on the earth. So what did we really do in this experiment? We went out, you know, stuck a pole on the ground and we made sure that the pole was at 90 degrees flush to the, to the earth. But in theory, because the earth is, is spherical, my pole would have really been, been sticking out of my current latitude. This is not drawn to scale. I have exaggerated it just to prove my point. So this is the pole that you saw me sticking on the ground. And the pole ca casts a shadow and that shadow is here. And there is one other minor uh, point. Let's, let's talk about it. So here's our sun represented in red. And you know, the sun rays are falling on the earth. For all intents and purposes, you know, they are parallel to one another. On summer solstice, if you had a stick 
sticking out at uh, Tropic of Cancer. In its local solar noon, it would have cast no shadow. That's what this represents. But we are at a particular latitude around the globe and if you put a stick and look at it, look at its shadow or at solar noon, you're going to see a shadow here. Now, what we try to measure is really this angle. And how did we do that? We actually shadow length divided by pole length is equal to the tangent of this angle. So what is tangent? Tangent is opposite side by adjacent side in a right angle triangle. And there are many other definitions, but we'll just go with that for now. So we got this this theta or this angle of measurement which is a ratio of the shadow by the pole length. Now with elementary geometry we also know that if I were to draw a straight line here running all the way across this line is parallel to the Tropic of Cancer. So from elementary geometry that we study in high school or perhaps even in, in middle school you know that when you have two parallel lines and you have a line that intercepts the parallel lines, the alternate angles are equal. And that's the theory we are going to use here. So we know this angle, which we measured using the inverse tangent of the shadow length by the pole length, which has to be equal to the angle between the Tropic of Cancer and the imaginary line drawn at my latitude. So these two angles are the same. And we also know our latitude, but what does it really mean? It really means the angle between the equator and the imaginary line drawn from the center of the Earth to this point on the sphere. So this angle that you see between the green and the black lines here minus the angle that we just calculated should be equal to this angle. And what is that angle? That is the angle between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer, which is 23.4 degrees. That's how you get the first formula which, which says if you're north of the Tropic of Cancer and if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, and if you do this experiment on summer solstice, the uh, axial tilt must be equal to your latitude minus the measured angle. So my friend who lives in New Jersey also lives on the Northern Hemisphere and his location is of course north of the Tropic of Cancer. So essentially for him and I, the measurements didn't change in the sense uh, the, the algorithm didn't change. We just had to take our current latitude and subtract the measured angle from it to get the axial tilt. But my friend who lives in Bangalore, he had to do something else. And here's why. His location is, let's pretend it's somewhere here. It's between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer. So if I were to draw a line here, and the pole that he would have stuck on the ground would be something like this. Something like this. And because the sun's rays are hitting parallel to the Tropic of Cancer on summer solstice at solar noon, so his shadow would be something like this. And this is really the angle that he measured. So what this really means is if you were to draw a parallel line extending the sun's rays, you get a very similar problem, but slightly different. Here, this measured angle is really equal to this angle, which is less than 23.4 degrees. And how do you get 23.4 degrees? All you have to do is take the measured angle and add it to his latitude, which is obviously south of the Tropic of Cancer. That's why for somebody who lives between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer, if you measure, if you have a measured angle, uh, you, you need to add that to your uh, latitude. And for somebody who's living on the equator, you know, on the equator, if you measure the angle, that would have been equals 
equal to 23.4 degrees. It's the exact same principle of parallel lines and having an interceptor and your alternate angles being equal. And somebody who lives south of the equator, let's say somebody lives somewhere here, and here's a pole that they stuck on the ground and the sun's rays are hitting parallel. So this is, is the measured angle. Parallel. Let's assume you extend it and you have a parallel line. This line is parallel to the Tropic of Cancer and this angle is going to be equal to their current latitude plus 23.4 degrees. So what you need to do in order to figure out the axial tilt is take the measured angle and subtract their latitude in order to get the axial tilt. So I hope you all learned a little bit about how to calculate the axial tilt um, with, with some very basic trigonometry and uh, geometry. So you also probably understood quite well why the axial tilt equals latitude minus the measured angle if you are north of the Tropic of Cancer and if you are between the Tropic of Cancer and the equator, the measured angle plus your local latitude gives you the axial tilt. And if you are south of the equator, axial tilt is given by the measured angle minus your local latitude. And if you are happen to be directly on the equator and if you are lucky to be there and you happen to make this uh, or do this experiment, the measured angle should be very, very close to 23.4. So I find this extremely fascinating and I thoroughly enjoyed doing this experiment and uh, a big thank you to my two friends, Visma and Arun, who hopped along and you know sent their measurements to me. So I hope you all learned something out of this and had fun and uh, thank you all. Take care, bye-bye.